Hi, Chem Team. Uh, we've defined compound molecules as different types of elements bonded together. The way chemists name compound molecules uh, depends on whether the compound is an ionic compound made from a metal and a nonmetal, or a covalent compound made from more than one nonmetal. Uh, and so to name an ionic compound, uh, chemists will just place the name of the metal in front of the name of the nonmetal, and then add a suffix, "-ied", uh, to show that the metal and the nonmetal have been bonded together. Uh, so for instance, if chemists wanted to name a molecule of MgCl2, uh, they would first say the name of the metal, magnesium, followed by the name of the nonmetal, chlorine, uh, and then add in the suffix "-ied", to show that the magnesium and the chlorine have been bonded together. And so the name of this molecule would be magnesium chloride. Uh, likewise, if they wanted to name Al2O3, they'd take the name of the metal, aluminum, followed by the name of the nonmetal, oxygen, uh, and then add in the suffix "-ied", to show that the aluminum and the oxygen atoms have been bonded together. So the name of this molecule would be aluminum oxide. Now, if chemists wanted to name a covalent compound, uh, for instance, N2O3, uh, they'd follow a very similar process uh, in which they would first say the name of the first nonmetal, uh, followed by the name of the second nonmetal, and then attach an "-ied", at the end to show that the two nonmetals have been bonded together. Uh, so in our example, we would say nitrogen and oxygen, and add in an "-ied", to show that nitrogen and oxygen have been bonded together. Uh, however, in naming covalent compounds, uh, chemists will add a prefix in front of each of these elements to show the number of each element. Uh, so for instance, uh, since we have two nitrogen atoms in our molecule, we would add the prefix di in front of nitrogen to show that there are two nitrogens, di meaning two. Uh, and since there are three oxygen atoms in our covalent compound, we would add the prefix tri in front of oxygen to show that there are three oxygen atoms. And so the name of this molecule would be dinitrogen trioxide. Now, we've already learned a couple of these prefixes over the course of the year. Uh, however, for the purposes of this problem set, you are going to be given a table showing all of the prefixes uh, up to the number 8. So another example of a covalent compound, uh, CF4. Uh, to name this compound, uh, we would take the first nonmetal, carbon, followed by the second nonmetal, fluorine. We would add the suffix "-ied", to show that carbon and fluorine are bonded together. Uh, and then we would add uh, prefixes to show the numbers of each type of element. So in this case, since there is one carbon atom, uh, we would add the prefix mono in front of carbon. And since there are four fluorine atoms, we would add the prefix tetra in front of fluoride. And so the name of this molecule would be monocarbon tetrafluoride. Although you'll often see chemists uh, abbreviate this, they'll just drop the mono and just say carbon tetrafluoride. Uh, the other thing to note is that ionic compounds don't use prefixes. Uh, because the elements involved in an ionic compound always bond together in the same ratios, uh, for instance, one magnesium will always bond with two chlorines, the chemists don't put any prefixes in front of them. And that's it. At this point, you guys have a couple of practice problems. We'll see you in class tomorrow.